Hi guys, it's Pixels Tech here, and I'm back with another Widgie Widget video, what's new in Widgie 4.0. So iOS 18 gave us plenty of updates for customizing your homepage, and as always, Widgie didn't fail to deliver on keeping up with those changes. And some of these features are, it's now fully iOS 18 compatible, resizable widgets on the home screen, large icon mode support, tintable widgets with fine tuning, a new goodies tab, and new Siri shortcuts. There's also now in 3.4 update, a new tap action setting, which is additive buttons, and more third party apps in settings. Day and night mode for weather icons. SF symbols is now symbol six, iOS 18 health kit support. They've updated French and Chinese translations and removed iOS 15 support. So let's get into showing you the updates and we're gonna press edit and go to our new customized tab, which is new in iOS 18. And you can see iOS 18 has plenty of new options. So first we're gonna look at tint and by selecting tint and then choosing the color, as you can see, the widget is really responsive and the color is really vibrant and, and looks great. However, I did have to make some changes in my own widget. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna open the widget app and go to the create tab and choose the widget we want to use the tint on. We're then gonna press the edit button and we're going to go to the documents tab, which is in the bar in the middle of the screen. Scroll down to the bottom and you can now see at the bottom tint threshold and tint shadow on or off. Tint threshold for me, I found 55% to be perfect. And as you can see, I'll change it slightly so you can see that more blue comes out if I have it at 80% and more white is showing at 30%. So to get it right, you might need to play around with it slightly, but as you can see from my widget, we've got a nice tint and works really well. Also, another tip to get it perfect is if you go to the Manage tab, select the widget slot that you want to edit and go to Change Theme, and you can play around with the color scheme and theming, which can help get your tinting right for those more complex and bright widgets. So now we're gonna go back to the Manage tab and select Setup Transparency. And at the top, you can now see small and large toggle. Now, when you press the tick in the top right, you will see this warning. Widget needs to receive the widget information from Apple. And at this stage, it hasn't. So what we need to do is go back to the home screen, go into jiggle mode, press edit and add widget. We're going to go down to widget and scroll all the way over to the right hand side. At this stage, you don't need to add a widget, but I have just to show you what that does. And then we're gonna go back to Widgie and press the tick. As you can see, it's loading the information and as normal, you would select where you want the location of your widget. And to show you this back in reverse, we're gonna go back to the home screen into jiggle mode. And this is where you can change it from large to small. And you can repeat the process we've just gone through, but with the small widget selected in transparency mode. Now, I also want to quickly run you through the dark mode tinting on iOS 18 because it's not quite as simple as normal dark mode. So if you go back to the customized tab and you can see a little tint button and the wallpaper will go slightly darker. But if you want that as your normal mode, then you're going to have to change the wallpaper transparency settings. So we're going to go into a jiggle mode and take a screenshot of both dark and the light backgrounds and we're going to go back to widget and get to the transparency settings from there we can set our backgrounds as we need so if the background is tinted dark you should put your tinted background as your main transparency wallpaper if you want it light you should put your light one as your main transparency wallpaper and if you want the option to do both through the dark mode settings you should add the dark mode wallpaper into the optional slot. Now another really good feature with iOS 18 and 4.0 widget is resizing widgets. So as you can see on the screen, if you go into jiggle mode, you can now move the widget between sizes by holding down the bottom right corner and sliding to the size you desire. 
Now to do this in Widgie, it's all about using the Manage tab. And what they've done is they've aligned the small, medium and large slots with the size order. So if you've got three widgets that you'd like to be able to resize, they should always go in the same slot. So as you can see, I'm using slot eight here and all of the widgets that I want to resize are in slot eight. So this is great. And if you want to keep the same theme, you can create widgets around that theming. But just remember that transparency mode will not remember the old position. So you may need to go back in and alter transparency mode. So it does work a lot better with widgets without transparency mode, but will still work if you use the same positioning. Also in Widgie 4.0, there have been a few organizational changes. So the help and FAQ are now in the create tab right at the top. And if you click on the help tab, you'll see my tutorials there at the top and then various other frequently asked questions and answers. Also in the create tab, you've now got import at the top right and Widgie backup, which is just below create new. Now, another addition is in the main menu bar at the bottom, we've got a new goodies tab, which takes you to the Widgie Reddit page and now also has a wallpapers tab which has a large selection of different types of wallpapers that you can use for your iPhone theming. In addition to this, we now have an option to transfer all transparency cutouts. What this does is it will create a file of all of your potential transparency cutouts and allows you to go through and add those as images within your widget. What this will allow you to do is create alternate backgrounds for your widget. And I'm just quickly showing you how you can have two different wallpapers and have two different images and be able to swap over the two by using a tap action button. I'll do a much more detailed video in the future on this. Another update in Widgie 4.0 is the introduction of night customized weather icons. This is in addition to the day customized weather icons introduced in Widgie 3.2. To add these, we're going to go to the Customize tab in the Widget Editor, and we're going to see the day weather icons at the top, and scroll down further to see the night weather icons. To add them, we're going to press Add, and choose the media file of your choice. For a more detailed tutorial, please watch my What's New in Widgie 3.3 video. As for new symbols, we've had some additions, which are two new moon phase icons. These can be found under the Smart Symbols, and we've also had the SF Symbols 6 update. We've also had some new shortcuts added. So I'm just going to create a new shortcut in the Shortcuts app. And we're going to type in Widgie, which will bring up the relevant shortcuts. To add the shortcut, you just select it. And in Widgie, you can use tap actions to trigger shortcuts. So I'm just going to use Play Pause Music for this one. And then by selecting Widgie slot, you can select either all the widgets or you can select the specific widget you want to reload. Now the new shortcuts we have is Widgie Transparency, and that will update the images between the dark mode and light mode images that you set in the transparency settings. And Widgie Reload and Widgie Transparency are both available to either open Widgie or just to do nothing and return to the home screen. And the final update I want to go through today is the additive buttons. Now this was a 3.4 update and it did take me some time to understand how it works. But the best way I can explain it is it only changes the state of the selected layers and doesn't reset to the normal display just like a normal button would. So I've used a noughts and crosses example to try and show you how multiple layers can be changed individually. I do plan on doing a full video on tap action buttons. Just so you know, you add a new layer which is a tap action and you add a button or in this case an additive button and you make sure that the layers are selected that you need to change but as you can see by my example it can be quite complex so please stay tuned for that video now the last thing i want to show you is the reverse animation transitions and as you can see by my example the layer is entering with one animation and leaving with the other now to do this you're going to select the layer you want to animate and you're going to go down to effects and now you can see you have a layer appeared transition and a layer disappeared transition. And it simply is just change those to different animations as you see fit. 
and we've also had two new animations added which are blur and scale. I really hope you enjoyed this video on what's new in Widgie 4.0. There have been some fantastic updates and I'm really looking forward to seeing how everybody in the community makes their widgets look fantastic in iOS 18. Please like, subscribe, ring my bell, feed my ego and I'll see you on the next one.